Hey everyone, thanks for joining us for a very special INE Live I, uh, today. I'm your host, Katherine Brown. We have a fun stream today and some awesome prizes to give away. So we wanna go ahead and get started. We are talking about INE's newest certification, the Enterprise Defense Administrator, or EEDA. You may be familiar with this. We just launched it on June 28th. We've seen a tremendous industry response to this certification already. It's something we are really proud of here at INE. And we're gonna be talking one-on-one -on -one today with the instructor of that course, Brian Olaf. And of course, we are also giving away some pickleball prize packs today. These are awesome. If you entered to win, uh, entered your name to win, stick around for a few minutes and we will announce these winners shortly. First, a little bit of housekeeping as we do each time we stream here on INE Live. I want to let you know that we are streaming live right now across social media platforms, including LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch. Be sure to like and subscribe on the social media platform you're using so you can stay in the loop every time we go live. We love it, of course, when you get involved. Talk to us, talk to others in the chat. We already see it's going this morning. That's why we created this live experience. Experience. And it's really very cool to see all of you interacting with us, networking with each other every time we stream. That's one of our favorite parts. So we have a team monitoring chat. If you have a comment, drop it in there. If you have a question, do us a favor, put a cue at the beginning so we can find those questions easily and get you some answers as we're scrolling through. And we'll get to as many as we can today. And with that, I want to bring in Brian Olaf. Brian is a defensive security instructor here at INE. He has extensive experience with both network and server administration, as well as defensive cybersecurity operations and engineering. Brian holds certifications in EJPT, CompTIA Security Plus, and Splunk Core. He loves helping others learn. I can vouch for that firsthand. I've asked him a million questions. He's always very patient. Explains why Brian is such an incredible instructor. And Brian, we are uh, really grateful to you for being here with us today. Absolutely, Catherine, thank you. Awesome. All right, let's 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 dive in. We've got a few questions for you, uh, Brian, about the EEDA, and then we'll get to these uh, these pickleball winners here in a second. But um, first, I know that you were very intimately involved in creating the EEDA and uh, the certification and the learning path. So first, just wanted to see if you can give us an overview of exactly what the Enterprise Defense Administrator certification is and who it's designed for. Absolutely. So the, the certification and the learning path both together are designed to be kind of an entry level defensive cyber security, cyber security certification. Say that one time slowly. Um, it covers a lot of the basics of the defensive cyber security engineering, you know, how to secure enterprise environments. It starts off with a bunch of the you know uh, fundamental information a lot of the theory behind defensive cybersecurity, a lot of the the why things are done but we've got a lot of hands-on components in there as well to kind of get in there and get your hands dirty um the exam itself will test you both on you know kind of your knowledge of some of those foundational ideas and the hands-on skills as well um but it's really designed to teach how to secure environments prior to an attack actually occurring. And we go over a lot of not just the how to do things, but why they should be done also, why things are done a certain way. It's important, we think, to, to put a lot of that knowledge into context. So like I said, not just the how it's done, but why it's done as well. As far as really who it's designed for, really just those who are just started getting or getting started in cybersecurity and want to go to that kind of more defensive path. Um, one of the, the, the biggest things it does help to have kind of a, a, a fundamental IT background, some some basic networking skills, maybe some some system administration skills in there as well, but not 100 percent necessary. Awesome. Um, so we obviously have a, a lot of certifications here at INE. Can you talk a little about how the EEDA complements other certifications that we offer? Absolutely. It's it's the biggest part is it's it's we're kind of just continuously expanding our kind of ever growing cybersecurity library, if you will, with both learning paths and uh, certifications. Uh, and this is one that's really good to kind of help. Uh, round out our entry level offerings. So where you have like the EJPT on the red side, especially with the, the newer version of it, we have now the EDA that is more of on the blue team and a little bit of the yellow team side as well. And it's really gonna be meant to be 
kind of that first part of our defensive kind of career learning path is if, if you will um we've got plans for an additional uh certification to kind of follow this one the enterprise defense professional coming soon in a at a future date at some point all right a little teaser there for us brian all right everybody stay tuned uh for more details on that um Brian, why do you think now is the time to focus on offering a blue team certification? And um, something you said when you were answering one of the, the earlier questions really stuck with me is um, you said this really focuses on stopping um, things before they happen. Why, why do you think now is the time to focus on that? Over the last kind of several years and a, and a lot before that, there's been a, a continuous increase in all kinds of different cyber attacks. And there's there's no sign of any of that slowing down anytime soon. So it's really a, a critical thing to have for organizations to know how to protect themselves, not just how to respond to the incidents, but how to make sure the environments are secure to prevent the incidents as well. And a lot of businesses are starting to put a lot more emphasis on these more defensive roles and, and not just the incident respond roles. Um, but looking more at things like vulnerability management roles, risk management, uh, even security administrators, security engineers as well. And this uh, certif certification and learning path combo are really designed to kind of help fill those roles and train individuals to, to, to go into those roles, um, especially if they're not really sure where to start. It kind of helps them get their foot in the door there. Yeah, that's great. And we've, uh, I was just browsing through some questions um, that we've been getting a couple of people asking, you know, what kind of assessment is this? And so that, that I think speaks to that. Um, also getting a lot of high fives in the chat, Brian. So that speaks um, to, to your great skills as an instructor and, and as a, a designer of this certification. So um, you mentioned the yellow, yellow team um, a couple minutes ago. I wanted to circle back to that. One of the things that makes the EEDA really unique um, really in the industry is that it brings in these yellow team elements. Um, and I wonder if you could just talk a little about that and why you felt it was important to, to bring these pieces in. Absolutely. So there's a lot of overlap between blue team and yellow team uh, skills and roles. Blue team uh, is primarily usually uh, is with, uh, you know, incident response roles, things like digital forensics digital forensics it's really what to do in response to an attack and we do cover a lot of that yellow team on the other hand is uh like i mentioned before how to secure the environment before the attack ever happens and those roles like i said overlap a lot you have security administrators security engineers who will do incident response work where their main goal is to you know kind of configure a secure environment but you also have incident responders who will do a lot of defensive configurations and make the environment more secure as well. So it's really important to include both of those, I think, in any kind of comprehensive training. We didn't want to really focus on a, a specific color, if you will. We wanted to create a, a certification and a learning path that kind of tie directly into what the job role really is, what defensive cybersecurity folks actually do as opposed to, you know, training on on one specific title or, or, or another, really just what the job roles do. And our, our the hands-on labs for both the exam and the learning path cover a lot of both of those parts as well. So you have things like going in and configuring and setting up a logging infrastructure for an enterprise network. And then you have uh, some labs that go over uh, log analysis, which is more of a blue team. You go in and you have some that are designed to kind of walk you through how to secure an active directory environment. And then after it's secured, you go through and review some of the logs that have been generated from active directory events. So it kind of it covers both of those skills because when you're really working in the field, those job roles overlap very, very frequently. Yeah, and I love that you mentioned the job roles. That's really.
believe I've lost your audio there, Catherine. We're going to get back to Brian in just a second. Um, but in now the meantime, you. oh, you hear me now? Okay. All right. Now I hear uh, you. Okay, cool. All right. So we'll get back to Brian right now. Brian, I was just <laughs> saying, um, we, we have a lot of people um, who are watching this stream who are in the midst of this course, who are excited to, to gear up for it. Um, as the, the creator of this course and the designer of the certification, any tips for studying? Um, yeah, uh, several actually. One is don't skip the hands-on labs. They are very important, not only for you know, the exam itself, because they, they kind of prep you for the exam, but also to just practice the skills as well. All of the labs throughout the learning path uh, have uh, kind of walkthroughs for you know, what the lab is designed to kind of teach you. But it's a good idea also to kind of just go beyond those walkthroughs as well. Try some new things related to those individual labs. You know, poke around at some of the different settings in there, some of the group policy options, see, you know, where settings are, what they do, um, and don't really worry about breaking it. If, if something goes wrong and, and, you know, you can't recover from the lab, just, just restart it and try it again. That's our labs are designed so that if, that if anything happens there, you can just restart it and try again. It's a great location to practice skills and to practice failing as well because it doesn't matter how good you are in an enterprise environment you're gonna have times where you fail i know i've done it more than i'm really going to admit at the moment <laughs> um if if you're not clear on some of the concepts for some of the things re-watch the videos or if you need clarification on something i'm talking about in any of the courses reach out to me i put all my contact information at the beginning of each course so that if you have any questions you can email me or, or you know hit me up on twitter or, or whatever um, use all kinds of whatever resources you need to learn the materials you're not limited to just the learning path but everything that the exam kind of tests on is included in all of the course material so kind of keep that in mind um, when you're going to start taking the exam, one thing I highly recommend, make sure you don't skip this part. Read the PDFs you're supplied with uh, at the beginning of the lab portion of the exam. They do have very, very important information uh, that is necessary to complete the exam. We, we've, we've noticed that a little bit. Um, so make sure you're, you're looking at those before you do the lab portion of the exam. And another thing you can do to kind of uh, prep for the exam ahead of time, right before you're ready to take it, is go back through the courses and retake a lot of the quizzes that are included throughout the courses themselves to kind of refresh and, and kind of give yourself kind of a pretest, if you will. All right, great tips and uh, getting it right from the creator. And Brian, awesome that you put your contact information out there. I know you and uh, a lot of the instructors here at INE um, are so passionate about helping people, reaching back out to people when they reach out to you, asking you questions. Um, and it's, it's just fantastic to see. We go to conferences and we see people coming up um, time after time and just saying that's so cool that you know you, you emailed me back or I had this question, reached out to you. Um, so that, that's awesome that you do that. Brian, thank you for being here. Thanks for taking the time. And, um, and of course, for, for all your hard work on the um, learning path and the certification, we're, we're pumped about it. Thanks, Catherine. All right. So a lot of you are here because you entered to win a pickleball prize pack, and we at INE are going, uh, we're giving it away to celebrate the launch of the EEDA. And you may be wondering, like, what in the world, why would we be talking about cybersecurity and pickleball? Like, like what do they have in common? Well, it turns out there are a ton of similarities. And we got to talking about it on our teams. We started exploring them, and we really couldn't get enough of the um, of the similarities and the contrast between the two. So, you know, pickleball. If you play, um, you know, it requires a strong defense, right? Agility, the ability the ability to pivot and make decisions quickly, and the ability to think strategically. All traits that are super important when it comes to defending your network. And as we know. Pickleball is the fastest growing sport in America. It's grown 159% over the last year. Roughly 48 million Americans have tried pickleball at least once, and 9 million people say they play it regularly. So we also know there's a huge contingent of cybersecurity professionals who hit the pickleball courts to work out their stress, have a little fun. So we just kind of want to piggyback off that a little bit and have some fun of our own. So we're giving away uh, these pickleball prize packs, two paddles, 
pickleball balls and an INE water bottle specially designed for you guys. We selected the winners at random at noon today using Viral Sweep for guaranteed random drawing. And so without further ado, want to get to those winners. There you go. Names up on the screen right now. Kathy Knoll, Ann Curry, and Scott Speak. Those names again, Kathy Noel and Curry Scott Speak. Congratulations to you guys. Be on the lookout for an email from us later today with instructions on how to claim your prize. Good luck to you when you're hitting the courts out there. A big thank you to everyone who entered. And if you didn't win, don't worry. We love giving things away at INE, so we will certainly be having another fun contest soon. Just stay tuned for that. That was going to wrap up today's stream. If you missed it live, you can look for the replay across our social channels and on the INE website. Of course, be sure to like and subscribe on the social media platform you're using right now so you can stay in the loop when we do go live. We'll see you next time. Until then, have a great week.